Roller coasters are fast. Well, some are faster than others. Just look at King Dakar at Six Flags Great Adventure, which launches riders from 0 to 128 miles per hour, 206 kilometers per hour in just 3.5 seconds. Or even the world's fastest roller coaster, Formula Rossa, which reaches the top speed of 240 kilometers per hour, 149 miles per hour. With that much speed, something substantial must be in place at the end of the ride to slow you down. You want to be absolutely certain that the final brakes will bring you to a stop. They will bring you to a stop, right? Phew. Fortunately for you, modern roller coasters feature fail-safe brakes. Essentially, they'll always be there to slow you down. But how? What's so special about roller coaster brakes and why do they never fail? For as long as roller coasters have existed, they've needed some form of braking. The first real coasters, the switchback railways of the late 1800s, went so slow they didn't require any dedicated brake. Someone could simply reach out and stop them. As roller coasters got bigger, a more sophisticated way to stop the train was required. The solution? Brakemen. Stick a dedicated person on the train to slow it down when required. The brakemen would control a lever which when pulled applied friction to the train's running wheels, slowing the entire vehicle down. This meant the ride speed could be controlled at all times, including stopping still to unload new passengers. Several roller coasters still use brakemen, brake people, today, including Rutschbahnen at Tivoli Gardens in Denmark, one of the world's oldest roller coasters which first opened in 1914. Having a person ride every single roller coaster all of the time, every day, is quite intensive. Excellent if you like roller coasters, but perhaps a bit too much for everyone else. To solve the issue, someone thought to remove the brakes from the train and instead place them at the end of the ride. Genius! Now, the entire roller coaster could be controlled from a single point, the ride station. In the beginning, skid brakes, elongated planks of wood with a rough metal surface, were used to slow the trains down. A lever in the station could be pulled to raise the planks, causing them to contact the underside of the train, reducing its speed. A series of skid brakes were placed at the end of the ride, as well as in the station, to bring the train to a complete stop. Skid brakes were innovative, cool, and efficient. But they did have a drawback. Rain. In wet conditions, the brakes simply wouldn't be as effective as the rain reduced the friction between the brakes and the train. The solution? A roof. Roller coasters were designed with enclosed brake runs to shield the skid brakes from weather, allowing them to operate efficiently all of the time. For example, Phoenix at Knobles and many other classic wooden roller coasters feature enclosed sections at the end of the ride to allow the skid brakes to do their magic. After a while, the levers used to control the brakes were replaced with pneumatic systems. Now, a joystick could be used to raise or lower the skids on demand. Up until this point, the brakes were entirely controlled by a person. They decided whether or not your train stopped at the end of the ride. To drastically improve the safety surrounding roller coasters, springs were added to the pneumatic system. This meant the brakes were in the braking position by default. If there was a loss of air from the system, the brakes remained in the up position, causing the train to slow down. This is the first failsafe found on modern day roller coasters, brakes in the braking position by default. Brakes on a roller coaster will slow the train down unless they are specifically told not to. Roller coaster brake design continued to move forwards. During the mid 20th century, National Amusement Devices, a company specializing in amusement attractions, debuted a new type of brake, the fin brake. This consisted of two parallel pads that would create a tight grip on a fin attached to the train to slow it down. These became the first form of modern friction brakes found on roller coasters today. Fin brakes proved to be incredibly efficient at slowing roller coaster trains down and didn't suffer from the rain problem plaguing skid brakes. Though, the new brake design didn't initially take off. For a while, skid brakes continued to be the norm. But then came the widespread debut of steel roller coasters. Steel allowed rides to become taller, faster, and more technically impressive. Ride designers needed new, effective ways of slowing guests down. 
Disney and Arrow development turned to the fin break when designing and constructing the original Space Mountain at Disney World's Magic Kingdom in 1975. This reduced the space required to slow the trains down, helping designers to fit the twin tracks ride inside the small Space Mountain building. However, there was an even more important reason for Space Mountain utilizing fin brakes. The ride was actually one of the world's first roller coasters to use computer systems to monitor the trains as they navigated the course. The computer would accurately control the speed of the trains by applying the fin brakes at specific moments during the ride. This ensured that each vehicle remained at a safe distance apart. Fin brakes also meant any roller coaster train could be stopped completely in a short amount of space if the track ahead wasn't clear. This was unheard of at the time, but has since become commonplace on all modern day roller coasters. Fin brakes have one minor drawback they can only be used on straight sections of track. Compare this to skid brakes, which would often be found on the final corner of many traditional wooden roller coasters. Space Mountain, therefore, features an excessive number of small straight sections of track on which the fin brakes are mounted. The exact design and name of the fin brake changes depending on the roller coaster in question. The most traditional design sees calipers placed in the center of the track grab a metal plate located on the underside of the train. Roller coasters built by Schwarzkopf saw their brakes placed beyond the sides of the track, which would grab a fin attached to the side of the ride vehicle. Bolliger and Mabillard, on the other hand, use pads instead of fins on the underside of their trains, which the brakes grab in a traditional manner. As a result of the differing designs, friction brakes has become the term synonymous with these caliper-style brake systems. When I said fin brakes have one drawback, I lied. They actually have another, one they share with skid brakes, wear and tear. Friction brakes rely on just that, friction, to slow the trains down. Over time, the brakes become worn as the material on the caliper erodes. As a result, the brake pads attached to the calipers require maintenance and are regularly replaced. If only someone could design a brake that doesn't use friction. Introducing the magnetic brake, now with 100% less friction. Instead of friction, magnetic brakes rely on the magic of magnetic fields to slow roller coaster trains down. On most rides with magnetic brakes, a metal fin placed on the roller coaster's track slides between a pair of permanent magnets placed on the underside of the ride vehicle. As the fin slides between the permanent magnets, it begins to generate its own magnetic field, one which opposes the magnetic field of the permanent magnets. This phenomenon, known as eddy currents, therefore slows the train down. Interestingly, the amount of braking force is directly proportional to the velocity of the train. Meaning, the faster the train travels into the brakes, the more braking force it will experience. This also provides a smoother braking experience compared to other brake types. The world's first roller coaster to make use of magnetic brakes was Tower of Terror, a Dreamworld amusement park in Australia. The ride, mostly identical to Superman Escape from Krypton at Six Flags Magic Mountain in the USA, used linear synchronous motors (LSMs) to accelerate the trains. These magnets would propel the ride vehicles from 0 to 100 miles per hour, 161 kilometers per hour, in 7 seconds. At the end of the ride, the magnets used to accelerate the trains would also decelerate the trains. After this, the idea of using magnets to slow roller coaster trains down began to gain traction. In the following year, Mr. Freeze at Six Flags Over Texas, built by Premier Rides, became the first roller coaster to use dedicated magnetic brakes to slow the trains down. This was followed by the likes of Intamin with the debut of Superman Ride of Steel in 1999 and other companies several years later. The exact placement or design of magnetic braking systems varies from ride to ride. Many use metal fins placed on the ride's track, which slide between permanent magnets placed underneath the train. Other rides feature a metal fin on the sides of the train, which slides between permanent magnets placed on the sides of the track. Metal fins placed on the track often feature the added benefit of being retractable. Pneumatics are used to retract the fin when required to stop the train from decelerating too much. Once the air pressure is removed, the fins rise back into their default braking position. Today, magnetic brakes can be found on most modern roller coasters. Why? Because they're the second type of failsafe brake system. Magnetic brakes don't wear and they are always active. If the train travels over the magnet, the ride vehicle will always slow down. 
Ultimately, this has led to permanent magnetic brakes being placed at the end of many of today's roller coasters. Magnetic brakes do have their own drawback, however. They can't stop a train completely. As the ride vehicle slows down, the braking force provided by the magnets reduces until it has little effect. As a result, magnetic brakes are often found in front of friction brakes or other methods of stopping a train completely, such as drive tires. The magnetic brakes slow the ride vehicle down to a crawl, while the friction brakes stop it completely. Together, these two failsafe braking systems ensure modern day roller coasters come to a stop successfully every single time. Brakes aren't just found at the end of the ride, however. You might find additional brakes partway through the track on many roller coasters. Rides like Silver Star at Europa Park and many other hyper coasters built by Bolliger and Mabillard feature trim brakes. These brakes aim to control the train's speed during the ride, slowing it down at specific points if required. The ride's computer system will monitor the velocity of the ride vehicle and can alter the strength of the trim brake to reach the desired speed. Sometimes this means no braking at all. Other roller coasters, like Shikra at Busch Gardens Tampa, feature unconventional brakes. Towards the end of the ride, Shikra drops into a pool of water. Large scoops attached to the train spray water behind the ride vehicle and onto nearby spectators. The water acts as a spectacle and a brake, helping to shed speed at the end of the layout. Some launch coasters feature long stretches of brake fins along the launch straight. While the train is launched, these fins are in the down position. As the trains pass over, the fins rise. If the ride vehicle fails to crest the roller coaster's highest point, it will roll back into the brakes, bringing it to a controlled stop. Other launch coasters feature magnetic brakes at the top of their highest point. This way, the ride can launch faster than required, ensuring it crests the highest point every time. The magnetic brakes at the crest are then used to bring the train's speed back to the desired level. Small sections of straight track, like on Space Mountain, can be found on many roller coasters today. These sections, known as block brakes, often feature friction brakes or other methods to stop the trains completely. Block brakes divide a roller coaster's track into separate segments, known as block sections. Only a single train can occupy each block section at any one point in time. A ride's computer system monitors the position of each train. If the block section ahead is occupied, the computer system will deploy the block brakes to stop the train completely. Only once the block section ahead is clear can the ride vehicle continue forwards. We've already made a whole video about block sections, including why they exist and how they keep roller coasters safe. Click the link in the description or the i button to learn more. So there you go, now you know why roller coaster brakes are failsafe. From brake people to magnetic brakes, the industry has continually evolved to create safer and more efficient ways to slow roller coasters down. Magnetic brakes require no power, are frictionless, and provide more braking force the faster a train goes. Friction brakes, which are in the braking position by default, are extremely effective and can stop the ride vehicle completely. Together, magnetic brakes and friction brakes provide the perfect system, ensuring you'll come to a stop at the end of the ride every time. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all next time.